I definitely do not want to write off the likes of Xanteras and Tabson, but the reason for that is because we did that exact same problem in DreamHack Leipzig at the very start of 2020, and Big came out of nowhere to take the entire event. So I think this is one of those matches we've really just got to let the players speak for themselves, and they will do so here in the pistol. We've got Roy to the top of middle, sees a couple players, peels back. That is just the kind of team they are as you're characterizing it. <laughs> Obviously, DreamHack Leipzig champions, we saw it in person. They have the they have the abilities. You just don't know which days they're gonna be playing well on. Bubski, nice 2K here. Even though Xanteros gets one, they've got window room control, and there's still a lot of presence from the T's at mid, as well as the bomb dropped in isolation up here at the top of mid on the left side. They'll have to go and recollect that before even attempting anything else. And recollecting that bomb, that's going to completely reset what they had originally thrown forward with the pistol. Underground completely forfeited. Tizian does get bomb back, so at least for big, Mad Lions have conceded that control. And I don't mind it. You know, sometimes you get bomb down and you think you have to prioritize playing on top of it. But in reality, a 4v3, holding your sights, still utility and a kit to play. This is a great spot for Mad Lions to just let big make their move. Another chance for Bubski to rack on some more pistol kills here. Sitting over in the van, Asilian's gonna spot his cross, take attention away from his opponents as they cross and potentially will run into him. Well, the rotates come out. They actually pull the cat player a bit, but it seems like they're clear that it's a fake already. Yeah, now it's just a matter of taking down Santeras and Tizium. Can sometimes be easier said than done, but it's done. Mad Lions using Bubski from that back corner. He gets himself four USPS headshots in the pistol. And if you want to praise the individuals of Xanteras and Tabson, then you also have to counter that with Bubski. Uh, this is a young Danish player who has shown great promise and I think really is shining inside of this five-man roster particularly. Yeah, he's definitely had a very consistently high rating. And since in the, in the past few months, in the past year really, it's just kind of stayed up. And so we are obviously expecting a lot from Mr. Bubski here. Yeah, a young whole player. Lot. He's uh, very fine-tuned with the memes, men. He's an <laughs> HLTV lurker. He was born to Crash Talk, which is awesome. Yeah. This scares me, though. Tizian, he kicks it off with a deagle, and then you look across what they have, of course, and there are four more deags in play. Big one of those heavy-handed teams when it comes to the cannon pistols, but here's Roy finding a great angle over top of the smoke. You know, he had the room to work with and he made sure to make the most of it. Saw the chance, but hold on. There are way too many casualties stacking up versus Mad Lions here. Still, Shush, he's gonna go for the mid-peak and oh, Xanteras. Two health is what makes the difference. Acor has to clutch this. They don't have bomb control. There's only 40 seconds and God forbid, look at their health. Yeah, this is an interesting puzzle. Acor, he might know where the bomb is and has to come. Oh, they oh. waited him out. Santeris, dude. I can't believe he got that last kill. But I mean, I mean besides that, that's that one, you know, it's just a brain gamer. He holds the angle. He knows they're going to come into window. The one before, I mean. Oh, shush. Yep, the thing with Shush's peak too is, again, the HP is low and he does land one bullet, but that's one bullet from what was probably 10 out of the MP5. The silence SMG lets him down and Mad Lions whimper through the second round, giving it up to Big and letting them transition with control. And they've even got themselves an M4. Maybe it's the online jitters. Okay, <laughs> have only played in Grimm's. Mm -hmm. Maybe they are a, a bit shaky. There's, there's always a difference, a step up between the scrims, the matches, whether it's online or LAN, and then online versus LAN. Every single one, you know. I, I think there's always something to be said about just not, not having played the matches. That makes it feel a little bit different when you finally lock into the server. Also, got the, no. thousands of fans watching. Of course. Great deagle play, but Xanteras did pop both of those heads in the exact same location. Mirrored peaks between the last two members of Mad Lions. Yeah, it was really smart for Xanteras to wait there. They could have gone to go up on Cat. Oh, looks like here's an attack towards the A site. They've got the wall smokes for the rotators. One in jungle, one for CT spawn, and Tizian 
really makes this a lot more viable. Yeah, that's the only point of attack, really. Tizian's handling everything from within connector. Oh, another one gets past this time. Roy, good little bit more damage versus Keto, but he dies in the end. So that's big converting, doing what Mad Lions couldn't at the start of Mirage. Yeah, and they they did it very, very cleanly. That was nice. I actually love that uh, A attack. I mean, the smokes are, are they're simple. There's only two of them. And once you come up a connector, you just, we saw Tizian covering everything else that you had to worry about from a very good kind of long range angle, headshot angle. So everything you want versus pistols. Many bodies here for Mad Lions. A pack of them trying to push up middle. Just those USPs to play, but hell, they get a couple of kills and uh, you can't be too upset about that. There was room for them to nab another two. Tabson and Searson both low HP, but uh, that round comes to a quick close. Big three to one as we find Mad Lions in with their first rifle buy. And of course, there's an op on Acor. But just USPs, that obviously could have been worse. So it's definitely not not such a bad round to look back on. This will be cool to see Acor on the op. We'll, we'll see where he goes with it. Off into B, and it, I think it's actually an upper B hold for the meantime. Don't know if, it, oh, he will be pushing through the smoke. Ooh, that scope is hurt. Tizian, he had a chance there. I think it was a smart push for Tizian to make. Acor was not prepared for that close angle, but hit a great flick to get him out of dodge. Agree with every decision and then praise the beauty of that minute little flick shot. It's a big opening for Acor. Now, Searson, he's going to get dinked off Cat. Ah, but still anticipates Roy coming out from that corner. And honestly, Roy had to make a play. There was somebody peeking him from the top of the staircase and also Khan under pressure. There is a CT back behind Ticket as well as the Opper down ramp. But that bomb will most certainly be planted because Keto lays down flashbangs to try and create that temporary cover. Doesn't keep him alive, however. Four versus two, favoring Mad Lions. And they've got this one split. Two towards CT, two in from jungle. They wait just a moment so that, of course, Zanteras and Co. can try and make a play, try to cut down some bodies, but they find nothing more. Big, they'll find their plant, and that's that. Mad Lions taking two. It's always good to have a little bit of patience. That 4v2, two players out in the open, they get a bit more desperate as the clock ticks down and all the CTs close off on all the easy angles. They know they need to make something happen and that's when you can put them in an even worse position than when they started in transition between two aggressive peaks. So Mad Lions picked that up with a good bit of patience. A nice retake on A. And it all starts off with this great flick from Acor. It was seems like some kind of handshake agreement there with the smoke. Tizian seeing it drop, but realizing it wasn't amazing, and then playing it patiently, listening for the scope, getting rewarded, but then not hitting the spray. However, AWP to try and counter that scene in the apartment. Searson posts up early. Flashbang forces him to reveal himself. And Acor is going to look to gather some information off of that. They see the presence inside of apartments. He clears underpass, notes that it's entirely open, and decides to peek top mid. But, oh, there's an op lying in wait. Searson, he'll find the five before this round. Hmm. And, you know, this very important weapon is, is stranded at mid. So a lot of emphasis from Big Clan on mid. Don't expect them to loosen their grip. Because they can stay over this gun, hold on to a very important part of the map, and maybe work on connector, which they've been doing really well. Yeah, that connector, which will completely expose the two CTs defending inside of the A site. Zenteras, though, a little bit of mistiming costs him his life on Palace. Shush is going to use the smoke to give him more cover to play. He gets over to the site itself, still trying to dance around these boxes, but there's a player right behind him. Oh! And so no surprise to see he dies. It's kills across the feed. Back and forth we go. It's almost in instantaneous, but Big still pick up the round. Kind of love that he comes through that, just as... The unscope comes in, and uh, yeah, at least they win because that was that's what, what's important. Once again, patience Close pays shot. off. Yeah, they use the exact same kind of anti-eco strat with the uh, smoke into connector. Don't know if they threw one TT this round. They had Zantara, Zantaris as well lining something up in the palace. Don't know where that was going to go off to. Maybe the stairs to make it look like an A ramp pressure attack, but it was actually big to uh, focus on mid more than anything else. And I don't see a reason why they should stop going back to it, especially this round, considering they're going up against pistols. 
especially. Santeras again, just chilling up in apps, doing his own thing towards Palace. Four players stack in A. Now, I've appreciated the anti-eco strategy, the one you highlighted with the connector control. Although Mad Lions have kind of predicted this and at least get numbers in position. And also, more importantly, they find that ramp open. So they've got a set of eyes down it already. Roy's going to stay tucked and big. A little bit of misdirection. Smoke to the top of connector indicates that they will head catwalk instead. So circumventing what was the pistol stack, Santeras tries to lurk out and loses his head, but at least that's not the bomb coming in tow. No, they'll go towards B. And there is still a defender. That's Bubsky, back by bench. Hiding and buying time. Tabson's not Ooh. doing this quietly, but okay, he finds him. I was going to say, who, do you, who would you rather have? But uh, yeah, uh, still, Tabson is probably the best uh, best bet to try to win the duel, if anything. So the looks like the retake is definitely on. We do have Shush with the AK looking for fights and finding a kill. There's also a big flank in play. Don't want to get too excited. Keto committed to the corner. Easy pick up back up for him. Asilian, last man left and nowhere near this bomb site. So big, again, just using these anti-ecos and not forcing the issue, not playing to an uncomfortable pace, not walking into the minefield and, and being caught by surprise. No, sir. They calculate, adjust, and execute. And it all works out well. Again, I feel like Bubsky is really the only player who had any real chance at any moment. And uh, the poor guy gets ripped apart, just like a silly and will towards the end of the round. So three survivors for big, three round lead for big. Score, 5-2. Five 5-2. Two. Five two. I think big looks sharp. I think Mad Lions actually look quite sharp. I haven't seen a, a bad spray this game, I don't think. It feels like everybody is extremely well drilled, well oiled at the moment, looking looking sharp, not wasting too many bullets. And uh, that's making it difficult for Mad Lions to hold onto the sites. The trades are here for the, for big. The opening kills are here for big. Sometimes their patience is what wins them the round, which is the, you know, the most impressive way to win. And uh, Mad Lions, they want to try to go for mid control again. They tried this on the anti-eco. They tried this with an op by itself. It didn't work out. So they're probably a little bit scared. Cillian should be. He's getting flashed, peppered by those utilities. And Tizian makes the most of it. Moves forward, gets the flash assist with Xanteras. Tizian's gonna try to go for the smoke spam and dies to Roy. So that's an interesting pickup. Suddenly puts this hold in question. Xanteras is trying to find them close smoke, trying to play that audio, doesn't work for him. He dies first, Keto can trade him, sure enough, but Searson's here from the window to cut off that cat push. So the entirety of this falls on Searson and he walks into the scope. Mm -hmm. Doesn't know, Acor's posted on him. Mad Lions make this retake happen. And I feel like it really does help that Roy gets a kill through smoke to kick it off. What do you make of this execute? Because I thought that like, they held two people at mid, which is one of the CAD players, by sacrificing a single player, and then pulled off this B exec, which completely isolated someone in the site and got a kill off for free. So to me, it looked like Big had a very smart round, but made a small sacrifice at the beginning. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I think that if they, you know, wanted to really hammer it home, then then the only thing we would have loved to have seen is some kind of maybe mid lurk or something to slow down Roy from getting up into Cat so that maybe they could leave the site and get off of those very predictable angles that he sprayed. But regardless, Keto 2K, big one to start off this round. Searson missing an off shot as Bubsky, or was that a leg? No, no, he missed. Okay, Bubsky loses health in one way or another. Yeah, Bubsky was low and then he missed. I'm not uh, shocked that Searson's surprised by that. Bubsky seems to come out of nowhere, just fleeing for his life. This is going to transition big with a man advantage, although very low health, over towards this B site. And seeing as they have low HP, I would rather them use this utility on the execution as opposed to try and hold it for a post plant. They've definitely got the flashbangs to try and make Asilian uncomfortable. That's exactly what they did last round, and it worked wonders at least in getting the bomb planted. They, they might not. I don't know. If they if they use utility, there's still two Molotovs here for Mad Lions. So if they throw too much, then they could get completely shut down. They don't have health to run through the fire. Well, 
They go ahead and throw out both the Molotovs. The incendiary grenade is in response. Bubskis rotate with another piece of fire is not going to help. Cuts off the tail end. They're going to have to smoke this out. And sure enough, they start walking into a brick wall. This B site holding strong and convincing them to head elsewhere. They've lost the bomb out the window. I mean, it goes from bad to worse. And understandably, Mad Lion's going to pick up this round. So a fourth for the Danes. Yeah, two players that are one hittable get away. It's a small, a small victory. The op is retained, which is really important for big. But yeah, they uh, it's difficult to try to walk out B. That late in the round, you don't want to see. The CTs have two incendiaries left over, but uh, big couldn't draw them out. And it was smart for Mad Lions to just hold on to them for as long as they did. Once again, it's this kind of gambit into mid from the CTs. And I think it makes sense they're not respecting Big to come out for mid control in a very standard way because Big are doing a great job of winning rounds with mid control. But uh, the CTs are always putting them like the entire round at risk in the first 20 seconds uh, with this push up. So it can get risky. And Big, I think if they play it a bit more passively and work on mid slowly, it's going to get scarier for Mad Lions to be standing out there. But this time around, there's no push from the CTs, and Big do come at it a bit slower. Now that they have top boxes control and the underpass crunch, they'll soon find out there's nobody here watching. What's interesting is, though, Mad Lions lack an insane amount of information at the moment because no one's watching window. So that means someone could have boosted in. Nobody's in jungle, to, and nobody's watching connector, and no one's back CT watching the window push from connector. So hopefully they didn't... Uh, bust open the window great i'm assuming that's what they did to make sure they can't flank that way but they're still you know in a very passive setup in the server i'll check it is broken so that that route you're mentioning that's a mistake. is entirely open yeah they shouldn't they shouldn't have done that shouldn't have done that we'll see if it comes back to pay off or rather cost them paying off for big perhaps but nope they don't throw anybody through the murder hole instead they're just going to try and bombard their way into b bubski two kills crucial but he then fumbles loses to the sheer aggression of the players and apps 3v3 health advantage and the bomb is down for big mad lions how are you going to make this retake happen well it seems like it's going to be entirely focused on market keto's back by bench oh Damn, that grenade's gonna soften him up. He is now ripe for the taking. Has to dodge the Molotov, so he's very much Oop, pinned into the corner. Searson's off down arc, misses the first shot. Acor's gonna punish him for that one. Keto low HP, no problem. Three kills from the back of bench, fantastic. Very well done by Keto. Great nade usage there too. Even though he eats the first HP, he drops the smoke to shun off that choke point and they need to come through it. An awesome spray down here from Bubski on the hold. But the reason that the last remaining CTs are so late is because in this full passive setup, the closest player to the B site was in CT spawn and the other two players are A ramp. So even if they run the entire way, it's going to take them some time. And plus, they don't know if anybody's sitting in the window. That's a grueling task. And a big ask to have them go for that. Cillian. One kill, two kills. Using it with that MAC-10. I mean, listen, Mad Lions came into this round with lackluster weaponry, but my God, are they making it work? Searson's off, peels one off of the bomb site, and he feels comfortable and confident enough to drop with it. But Roy, oh Roy, he's coming in from behind enemy lines. He's got one T jumping back from Arch. He actually eats a flashbang, although it helps that Acor has found a kill. Searson, one, and back into the cover. Mm. But Shush does not lose any time coming up catwalk and that is why mad lions have taken another round one that they honestly have no business winning yeah they, i mean there's another another b side take kind of like straight up i uh wonder why big weren't uh playing as well like they normally were to the top mid control but you know mad lions i mean they all they all basically had to contribute uh, and and each help out with the kill sorry i just want to know do you have the game open yes i do what would you like to know I would like to know what they're talking about. I have voice disabled. No, no, no. I heard the chat. Oh, let me take a little gander for you. Maybe, unless I'm crazy. Uh, Beast on a budget. All of Xanteris' kills so far have come with pistols. It's round see. 12. Pistols. Oh, I know what they said. What'd they, they say? Uh, 
They asked for a pause. Oh, that's not that exciting. No, it's not. It's not. You got my hopes up, man. I hope I'll forgive also you, though. Okay. Don't you worry. Searson Scout, see if that's forgiving. He's got Acor on the other side, ready to receive with the AWP. I was wondering if that little bit of timing created by throwing the Molotov was going to be when we saw the scout come, but it's going to get Does he hit it? thrown. Oh, oh. And he's not scoped. Now he knows, of course, that the boxes have been compromised. So going for this peak becomes a little more deadly. Both oh, players landing him. their shots. This was kind of sick, though, because he was aiming low. And he just and whipped hit up. Him high. Yeah. My leg. <laughs> Tizian's patience could very well pay off here, but they're actually going to try to complicate it by boosting a man on cat. No, they don't. They were trying to. Yeah, they gave up the bricks boost. Not sure why. But now the CTs really proceed as... Yeah. <laughs> Big is now picked A. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Comes out a little delayed here. Searson commits to it. Maybe just trying to let Mad Lions relax a little more than they should. Distraction from Cap comes in perfectly. Connector turns the head of the scope. Roy from beneath the palace. Good for two. Tizian's going to shoot him through the wood. Ah, but the op shot from Acor connects yet again, this time to the head of Keto. And Tizian, who's been patient from the get-go, is still in this one. Ten seconds however that's what's ultimately going to lose him the round at this point acor can just stay tucked and everybody knows this one's over so we are tied folks six rounds apiece mad lions kind of just letting the clock run dry versus big and hanging on as they tried to split a hey it's an objective based game if you can do that you'll take the win of course you know um big are going to try to get the bomb plant mad lions are going to try to starve them out of map control or the ability to move forward and and sometimes that wins you the round that's totally legitimate um on this round four players from big die in front of a ramp and under uh in front of palace as well but they didn't have the best guns they just had a couple of rifles so now did they have they actually wait sorry did they have a full buy last round i thought they only had a couple of guns yeah just I'm, a few I'm, okay so they must have forced up some pistols behind it or something like that because they just don't have any money still Ooh, Roy, only one this time around, and down goes the gun, but the Colts have been picked back up. Bumsky <laughs> doesn't give up. He just blows them away through smoke, <laughs> and that's that, folks. Mad Lions in the lead. I've gotten it back since the pistol. No Flubsky by Bubsky, okay? Look at the second one. Doink. Wow. That's how you envision that peak to go every time you make it, but it, it, it usually doesn't. It usually doesn't go that way. So I am a bit confused about the economy with that previous round because they're still kind of low for having saved twice if they did. So I'm assuming that they had bought armor with the rifles, the, the two rifles of the scout and the AK that they had and pretty much spent all they had. Oh, they're in a, a bit of a... German sex dungeon? Bit of a dungeon here. <laughs> I mean, this is uh, that's what my gaming headquarters would look like. I wouldn't have any windows. I would I would hate, you know, I hate daylight or sunlight because it, it can like put glare on your screen. These are things that ner nerds care about um, that are very important. So, I'd like to control the the temperature in the room, the lights in the room. The activities in the room. Oh, kicking it off early. Bubski just extending out from Cat. He's having a hell of a game. 15 frags for him. 14 rounds deep. And Acor, a little patience there, but a slight readjustment on the scope will net him a second kill for Mad Lions. So they're already comfortably positioned in the five versus three. Let's see if Tizian can disrupt this. He has slipped past on Cat. Ooh, and there was his chance, but he's found out by Roy. So that's a kill apiece for three of the members of Mad Lions, and I think the desperation of the round starts to sink in. Maybe they find a little bit of timing here at the B site. Hmm. Yeah, they'd have to get a, a bit lucky. Once again, though, it's just like, uh, what, what is going on with the economy? This is, this is what I don't, I just don't understand now. 
trying to pressure the SMG inside of Smoke, and Roy gives great cover. So making mincemeat of that one and pushing us to the final round of the first half. Am I, am I crazy, or have they just like not properly bought in three rounds? There was one round back where I, I know exactly. I know the round that you know what I'm kind saying? of got you a little confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they went in a bit. You know, they had like a couple sets of Kevlar. There was Deagles again. Uh, there was some smoke pieces in it. So yeah, I think they they kind of lost out on the trimmings because of that decision. But uh, you're not entirely insane. Okay, just kind of right, but not that. Just insane. a little bit. Right. Yeah. All well, right, we're well, both batshit crazy. It, it could be. It could be both. Well, here, we're on the last round now. Everybody's got the guns they need. Still, like, questionable utility for Big for whatever reason. But uh, at least they've got the AKs. Tapson a little bit low. Top Valk, not a bad spot here. Flash gonna make a move. Smoke comes down, put him out of position. Tizzy and great spray down. Amazing entries to get in. Handling both players trying to support each other. Yep, excellently done. Just really cutting through both those CTs and kind of almost dividing it into separate one versus ones, even though they were prepared for the hit. Worked out wonderfully. Looking like Big's gonna close this close as can be. Let's see if they can hang on to the retake attempt. The fourth retake attempt here for Mad Lions. Asilian finally getting onto the kill feed for them, but hold your horses. We are all of a sudden back into the two versus two. There's a couple of smokes for Mad Lions to still play with, so nullifying Palace is huge. Searson has to come up big, but somebody's sticking the stick. No way! 6-9, the score at the end of that first half, folks. Mad Lions with a bit of a robbery in the last round, sticking the defuse, and arguably a robbery of the half. Eight of the last rounds, they managed to pick up seven. So big came to a sprinting start and then a grinding halt. Yeah. They uh, tripped on the hurdle, got their foot uh, caught on it, landed on their knees. Yeah, I really quapped it. <laughs> quapped it hard, yeah. Let's see if they can get into this A site. They should. I mean, it's open for the taking. Defense in the form of two players in jungle. CT completely forfeited, other than Zentera's, just keeping eyes up at a distance. But this will enable them to throw numbers at the ramp as they come in for the retake. The good old 10-man retake. They're slow. They're, they're a little bit slow. This is one of the rounds where the time can actually run out on the bomb if you're not quick to CT spawn. But they need to be grouped and do it safely for sure. So prioritized Ooh. it. Flashes are trying to be timed. That's a great attack by uh, Big. They're, so they're just going to stampede in. They're going to go ahead and smoke off the bomb. Astillion trying to hang on if he can. They're already defusing despite him still being right there. No respect given from Big in the retake. Excellently timed flashbangs on ramp. Keto picking up crucial kills. You can see with the man advantage, the amount of options that come up there. First of all, you're way more confident. All your bros are still alive, so you run into the site. Plus, you know you can throw someone on the bomb and stick it. So there's no worse feeling than knowing you could have had five seconds with the bomb where you just defused and no one could have stopped you if you had enough teammates covering as distractions. And if you don't get on it and your teammates die, they no longer have that option. So. Once again, you know, getting the 5v3 right away is the most important part. We see that meta of that kind of plant be those kills in CT spawn and who times the flash better. And I say better, but it's really hard to quantify what better means. It's kind of when 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 does your CT guy feel like they're going to come around the corner? That's when you want to throw the flashbang for it to be the most effective, but not a second earlier or a second later. Because you're going to get flashed like he did. Speaking of getting flashed, oh, Keto, my yes. eyes are up here. Acor has a sub 30% headshot rate in the last 12 months, but over half of his kills in that time have been with the op. It's a good way to uh, cover up that, his bad aim. Is that just to invalidate the stat though? Like, isn't that okay now that he has, since he has... Yes. So is that just, is that just, just, just to say that he has a lot of op kills? Yes. What were you going to say? Uh, I was going to talk about Keto getting headshots while flashed on ramp uh, and the fact that, you know, we kind of painted him as being a crucial piece to big success today and he is at the top of the scoreboard. So the entries have worked well for big. And in that case, the retake too. But here comes a Cillian deep CT gunning down the counter terrorists. Mm. Searson doubles back around the ramp. Bombs planted on the A site. I kind of missed this round, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. How does Cillian just wreck the whole team? Man's yeah, got three frags yeah. and he's still going. Praise to press W. 
And what's wild too is like, look, look at the map, everybody. Those those X's marking the CT's deaths are all over the place, but yet they're all Asilian's kills. That's true. Yeah, some form of instant transmission by Asilian to kill so many players so quickly. Doesn't seem like really? we'll get another one unless Tizian sticks around, smokes the temporary barrier between them. He very much juggernauted it. I had someone uh, tweet at me and say it's because uh, Big saved so many times on the T side without bomb plants. But despite that, there's no there, there's no reason why you'd need to save or miss by three rounds in a row or four rounds in a row. But in that time, you know, before that happened, that weird, really never seen someone mess up the economy like Big did in this first half. I I feel like. Uh, uh, I haven't seen anybody else do it, but before that happened, Big looked like a super solid team in this game, and then during those four rounds, Mad Lion not only pulled ahead, but then started to look more sharp, more confident, and just closed the half So uh, after kind of having a really rough start. So I think, you know, there's a point there where I feel like it's the economy that played a big factor in, in, um, in the score that we're seeing now which usually isn't the main talking point anymore. I think that it's that economy hiccup coupled with Mad Lions shaking off the official rust. Um, you know, I, that was a talking mm. point we had with the analysts, whether or not we would see Mad Lions bounce into form really quickly. But I think that uh, when just a month ago you win $500,000, you're not some rickety, rusty old war machine. You're shiny and flashy and new, and they are looking good in this round particularly too. Just cutting through that B defense, finding duels. Bubski had crept up all the way to the windowsill. Pops Market gets the job done. This is going to be the 11th for Mad Lions. So uh, other than the, the strong start from Big at the beginning of their T side, this has very much transitioned into the Mad Lion show. As Antares has six kills now, as opposed to the four when we first had uh, Elliot bring up the stat about those only being pistol kills. I wonder if that's changed. The Taurus is a is a real enigma because he he truly is like one of the most mechanically skilled players to ever touch the game, and also not a dumb guy either. You know he's not not a one dimensional player I think, um, but and when he joined Big, it, it really seemed like Big were going to be the talk of the town, like top oh, yeah. eight potential, something very consistent. Him and Tabson, you no, know, just these were. Amazing, amazing players. Um, and you know, Watching they did terrorism. win Leipzig this year, so that's cool. Yeah. But uh, just so much, so much inconsistency. And even Searson, man. I, I Watching Zantara's yeah, leave Space Soldiers and join Big kind of felt like when we finally saw Nico leave Mouse Sports and have a better chance. Right. You know, like, I it's think like, that's it's an like a very god apt has example. been unleashed. And mm -hmm. uh, well, here we are 11 7. Yeah, yeah. And, and this strange. is no longer a new roster, you know, this is, it's been some time. Uh, I mean, at least his involvement with it, but uh, Bubski clears his corner and there comes a core combining with the cat pinch. So just dismantling the B site yet again, very easily versus the poorly armed opponents. Of course, there was a couple rifles for big in the mix and now you see them on the kill feed. Keto and Tabson and Tabson yet again. Cutting it down to the 1v2, if only Searson had been a little bit closer, then maybe he could go for this clutch. It'd be a wild one, but they didn't have much to lose. And so it still goes the way of Mad Lions. They pick a good site. They avoid the, the majority of the rifles. Tabson comes in for a nice couple of Consolation Deagle kills. But <clears throat> Searson, excuse me, is too far away from the action to try to take part. So uh, looks like Acor. Acor, Roy will save. Bomb explodes. Mad Lions at 12. Getting close to tripping distance. Boom. I like that one. Tabson just yeah. like, Bubski, Dude. get out of the hidey hole, man. Best part about Tabson, too, he's like, ever, I feel like I've never heard anyone say a bad thing about him. <laughs> you know, on top of him being the best player in Germany and like the star player and everything. Very true. Only, only heard Friendly nothing guy. but praise about him as a teammate. Yeah. See if the buy will make the difference. Five round deficit here for Big to try and climb against. Mad Lions have been looking good on the T side, but have yet to been tested. So let, let's see if things get shaken up. 
Remember how the first 15 were favoring the T's at the very start, too. It's true. They had their eyes set on B for just a second, but um, it looks like they're going to remass. Hold down mid. They haven't taken too much map control just yet. Mad Lioness hasn't haven't posed a threat to make them think that they can push something. So not surprised to see them play passively. They've still got good enough eyes on mid with this cat and connector player working together. So they don't have to be specifically worried about the window jump or anything that tricky. But now Mad Lions turn their attention to mid. I'm wondering what their final strat is going to be. Sears in here opens up the round officially with this off shot. Um, and that throws things a bit awry. I think they actually have to go back through B-apps and are going to cancel and just think about a contact hit. And if they do that, well, they're playing right into what Big expect because we saw Searson move those feet so quickly over here that he's able to nab another kill. Bubski, his second casualty. Astillion with an emergency plan to try and slip this bomb into the A site. Whoa, and he's got himself that second. But can Acor get over with the bomb? Shut <gasps> up. Oh my god, Astillion, you dirtbag. He just wrecks him, Terra's through the smoke across Cat. Three health is what he has. Three frags is what he's got. It's and 2v4. now they're in the 2v2. And Acor has, or Astillion's going to pick up the op, so he can lock down CT. It's going to be a rifle affair here for Acor on the hold. And do they want to, I was thinking, do they want to get crazy and work on a flank? But they, you know, bomb's already ticking down. No one's pushed up just yet. Searson's got the pistol out. I mean, this is going to be tough. Oh, it's oh. back's turn. That one's what? way too easy. Acor up close. AK, no scoped. Are you kidding? A two versus five attempt that made a Cillian look like the mastermind. And they fumble it. Oh. Uh, they, oh. they... They fumble it over towards CT ramp. That one actually, that makes me a little angry because it would have been such a beautiful play. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, hopefully we can still look at it as one, but yeah, you're right. I mean, like that, the, that positioning this there. This is just a, this is a really bad spray by Acor. There's really nothing more to say. You know, he, he had, he could just come around that corner spraying as hard as he can. We didn't get to see it from his POV, but that was a free one. And if he got that, then they win. But, uh, but the one good thing that Big did was that they came super late through CT spawn to the point that Asylian didn't feel even the threat of needing to hold it. They delayed that retake by that much time, probably so they could get one lurk kill off. Um, but yeah, they, they definitely shouldn't have gotten two based on Acor's position. Unlucky, unlucky. Around they had no business winning regardless. But I think Big will be able to sigh a little bit of relief with that one. Would not have been a feels-good moment. Would have put Mad Lions on 13, would have crushed the economy that has already cost big rounds in this first map. But this one is completely committing to the B site. Bubski on the front line, utility up and over. That's four smoke grenades, double flash. And a Molotov to boot here for Mad Lions, but they don't commit everything. Bubski, he's gonna get out. He drops back uh. behind Van. Three CTs here to hold him, but all the while they go back down underpass to try and lead towards Connector, and that does pick up the kill versus Zanteras. Takes a player off of Cat, and look at the marketplace. Nobody's actually watching for Bomb to walk out until now. Tizian feeling this pressure from both directions. Searson's gonna cut one off of Cat. That's no, excuse me, that's Bomb dropped. So they have 100% confirmation it's B. 15 seconds, and another sniper kill here for Searson, looking to lock it down. Then Tabson comes sprinting into the mix, just needs to deny this, which he will. Big again by the skin of their teeth. Searson is having the day of his life here, holding down the B site. He has to, he can sit on angles and, and uh, Mad Lions are just going to give him kills. I love the strat, it's kind of cool how they decided to use the, the, the underpass, underpass fake to A to go back towards Cat after getting a kill. They juggle the rotation just like they want. But Searson, he gets Bubski who comes out as the Lurk for uh, as the first player, that's one thing. Bubski does a lot by making space, but the second player, you know, after holding on to it, I mean, he's just so aware that they could still be going deep. Hey, all right, take a little freebie of a bomb plant there. Keto, there was so many players ahead of him that he was scared in place. So you know, they for just a second there, I was... bomb and implant. 
For a second there, I was kind of critical of, I guess I was critical of Mad Lions for allowing Searson to hit that second sitter. But then, you know, if you think about it, you know, Mad Lions feel pretty confident that no one's going to be watching B apps because we have just threatened Connector, making it look like a fake. So I, I, I just want to say, you know, more credit to Searson for kind of being that smart to yes. say, okay, I'm going to sit here and still continue to do this job because I have a second player with me in the site and uh, they can go ahead and watch my cat <laughs> or something else. Zed Terrace gets smoke. Yeah, pegged in the air, has to drop back down towards connector. So what could have been, we'll never know. But uh, I mirror your sentiment here. Searson definitely deserves the praise, especially because just seconds before he turns attention and drops bomb, both the CTs were falling entirely for that bottom mid play. Hmm. Searson doubles back through market, kind of realizes the possibility of what's to come, and, and slowing down that bomb was huge. Made Tabson's job look way easier since they played with four seconds left. But man, this angle. Searson's off, uh, ready for another one, and oh. they're going for the boost. He takes down the first underneath. A core <laughs> in the meantime gets Zanteras. That's incredible. And now Searson's in a really tough spot because the helping hand. Oh, what? Yo! He plays CSGO, Acor plays Quake. How are you gonna win? Jumping no scope over the boxes. And now they're gonna transition here into the A split. They've got that palace peak trying to get Tabson off of CT. He goes for the flash and tries to take fights, but Acor blind with another. Oh, eat your hearts out, big. That has to sting. I cannot believe that he went into the top of mid off that run boost, knowing where that other opera was, but still turning his attention to the other teammate in the window with a rifle doing something else, killing that guy first, and then dealing with the other guy top mid as well. That's an is. incredible amount of focus to be able to pull that off. You know how imagine you'd get normally in a situation like that? Imagine this. I mean, not only does poor Zanteras get flicked on by the late run boost turn of attention, but the poor guy also gets pegged by the smoke at the beginning of the round. So, so Zanteras, who's having a tough match at the moment, 6 and 18, is just not able to catch a break here. Look at this. Look at him just see this view. and turn. Oh. What? Oh, okay. He did find his feet on the barrel, but still. Yeah, yeah. Freaking no oh, scopes. Yeah. Yeah, no, but it's insane, man. It's insane. Turkish Delight, the last time Big played against Mad Lions, then named Tricked. Xanteris had over a kill per round and 119 ADR. Huh? Played very well. That was a, a minute ago. Yep. Um, but yeah, it goes, at this goes moment. to show you. Yeah, this at this match. moment. Is at yeah. 37 ADR. Six kills. Not many. If we can draw also to Searson. Yeah. Holy moly. I remember Zanter. I used to watch Zanteros' demos as the connector player. To me, he was like the best connector player in the world. You know, when he was kind of lesser known, but still this guy who was like, who the hell is this guy? He was playing connector and he was so good at it. I mean, Cat's got some, some of the same elements, but. Ouch. Tabson, he's kind of caught in front of Ticket. And that's a big double entry here for Mad Lions. Big double entry. Bomb comes flying outwards. Big's only ability to hold this would have been through Connector if Searson can land some incredible shots and he gets smoked off. So Big, they have to accept that they can do nothing in this round. Just clean entry frags unfolding at that CT spawn is the reason Mad Lions find 14. And had they finished off that two versus five with Asilian's incredible entries, there's a world this match is already done for. So will Mad Lions continue and just rack up the costs here, trying to take away this trusty op perhaps from Searson? Yeah, it's a tough pill to swallow. The obvious, there's numerous benefits to doing a contact play like that. One of them is you don't use any of your grenades that early. The other one is you gain a ton of space if one choke point isn't being watched for the window of time that you escape. And if your first player gets a kill, you almost always win the round if everybody else is right behind them. Where, you know, contrast that with the full execute in a site where they don't know where people are. You throw all your grenades, you flush out a couple spots, 
the other team uses grenades that could damage you on the way. You could all get sprayed down in the choke point. Rotations come in earlier. So there's tons of benefits to pulling off plays like that once in a while, even though you do run the risk because it's a dry peak of just getting sprayed down. Blind spam from Tabson. Doesn't hit the mark. Ooh, that's a big one. They get their palace control. So as opposed to playing to the real depths of that CT spawn, they're gonna play the forefront instead. And if Tabson, oh, I was gonna say gets overwhelmed, then they could be compromised. But instead, Tabson grabs himself a double. Good use of the A1S. And we find Roy 1v3. Roy, can we talk about this guy's breakout over the last year? A, a yeah, player totally. who came out of nowhere within Denmark. Used to be a blackjack dealer. Yeah, we've been at a blackjack table with him. Yes. He has won me thousands of dollars. Win. It's not true. I lost. Did you win that? Okay. No, no. <laughs> we don't talk I was about like, that night. Yeah, I was like, how many glasses of free wine was I in to not, not realize that? Um, That's the night we uh, snuck DJ into the casino. DJ Prius, the observer. That's correct. Hell of a good time. Yeah. Coincidence, probably. Three members of Big have an in-game name ending in a capital N. They've got the triple N setup. How come nobody Seems told so. us about this before? Would have made predictions so much easier, right? What would we do without you, Elliot? Now that we know the triple N setup. I'm not sure what like to do with this information. But I feel I feel more like knowledge is power, and I feel I definitely feel more empowered. I think the end factor is going to come into play. We'll have to see. Definitely worked last round. That was Tabson wrecking face inside of jungle. Ooh, big pick from Searson. Eyes deep down apartments, catching Bubski, and the man just wanted to go play underpass. Man, this right? guy's the like Jason Bourne. Nobody knows. Nobody knows what his itinerary is going to be. Yeah, he's been all over the map. Let's see if this A site can uh, weather the storm yet again. A core taking Tizian off of catwalk means it's very much the CT and under bout position. Roy's gonna try and fire one from above, but look, there it is. A core catching Searson. That's the one that spells disaster unless Xanteras and Tabson can combine here up connector in the two versus three, but check out these post plants. One palace, one tuck, deep CT, and a Cillian going all the way around mid. Taking the scenic route back into this post plant. And because Shush is so deep in CT, Xanteras may even just call that it's clear. Tabson's gonna go ahead and smoke off this bomb and they might just try this desperation defuse. Let's see how this one unfolds. Roy, he gets both kills coming out of Palace and locking this down. It's Mad Lions with 15 rounds. They had the officially, they had the three best post plant spots there with that long game, long term play into the back of Connector. And um, yeah, there was really no stopping it. That was uh, extremely well done by Mad Lions. Seems like moving fast is one of their better solutions or options to work with. And, um, all right, I just have a small, a small tech. I can't see the game, so I'll be back yes. in a sec. Program feed's gone. Don't worry, I'm in the server, so I'll let you guys know what's going on oh. here. I mean, uh, you can try to analyze from the info I give you, if you'd like. Listen, Xanteras, he's going to keep it real simple, okay? Deagle headshot destroys Acor. 4v4. Lackluster buy from Big. A couple of more pistols, a scout, and a Fomus. And everybody's just holding their own. Bombs deep towards T-spawn. They're feeling out middle. Connector, perhaps, to A. There are options open because big, they're doing it yet again. They're really offering quite a bit of uh, control towards middle to Mad Lions for free. Searson Scout moves forward on the A site. He's trying to find a head inside of Connector or even just keep eyes on Cat. They're, they're fishing for information while 
we do have this flank keto all the way around through t spawn so mad lions down to the 35 seconds they could get crunched if they're not careful but they've chosen the right route they avoid mm. that b site stack and the apps flank instead only having to deal with searson towards ct he is committed behind the ticket and he hits a crisp first headshot on a silly and comes out for a second dying to bubski and leaving mad lions 3v2 they'll find their plant and potentially the game here another kill off a of shush and it's all done